All right, thank you guys all for being here. My name is Tanya Mack and I'm the outreach director at the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic at MetroCare. We're super excited to be here with you guys. Um, our clinic actually provides counseling and case management for veterans, their family members, and just recently active duty service members. We are partnering with UTD for an RTMS study, and that's why you're here today to learn about that. Uh, we have Dr. Williams, who is a clinical psychologist and the clinic director at the Cohen Clinic at MetroCare. She has over 20 years of experience in the treatment of PTSD and is an ex expert in cognitive processing therapy. We also have Dr. Ellen Morris, who is a licensed counselor and supervisor and also the lab manager at the UTD site for Dr. Hart. She has worked in veteran mental health research for over a decade and has an extensive experience with psychotherapy. Um, so we have a presentation for you and I'll let Amy take it over right now. Thanks, Tanya. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and I, let me know if you can see that. Ellen, did that come up? Yes, it did. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so really the goal today is for us to give you an overview of what the study is about and enough to, of knowledge about the components of the study for people to understand what it is that we're trying to look at and what it is that we're trying to do. Because um, really the cutting edge part of this research um, in terms of treatment for PTSD is putting these things together in a way that has not previously been done except on a very small scale. Um, and we know that the things that are in the research actually or in the research study already have components that we know work. Um, and so I, I always like to kind of point that out when I think about the research, because it's not like we're starting from scratch and just saying, okay, we're going to just throw this at you and see if this works, because we already know it works, um, but we don't know if it works the best in what way um, and how we put it all together, if that's going to make things even better. So let me jump in and talk to you. I'm going to give you the, um, the bluff, bottom line up front that basically what we're trying to do is a multi-site treatment trial. So we're at multiple locations. We're using repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation, which for short are TMS. Um, you'll also see that sometimes referred to as TMS, but the repetitive just means we're doing it repetitively. And it's in combination with cognitive processing therapy, which is CPT, for combat-related post-traumatic stress disorder. And so that's a lot. And what we're gonna spend the next 15 to 20 minutes doing is unpacking basically what I just said in those four lines. Um, and I went ahead and put up here the primary investigator, Dr. Hart, who is at UT Dallas um, and is leading the charge in terms of this grant, um, which was Department of Defense funded. So the WHO, um, we're looking at, I think it's actually 330 veterans, um, not 300. With combat-related PTSD, we're looking primarily at post-9-11, so OIF, OEF, OND, um, but post 9-11, which is somewhat already kind of factored in because of the age that we're looking at, it can be males or females and um, there's no gender requirement, but we are looking for combat related PTSD. So if somebody has PTSD or thinks they have PTSD related to a combat event, now that doesn't mean that you can't have other bad things that happen to you because that's actually how the world works. Um, but what we would be focusing on and what we want to make sure is that we're looking at the PTSD coming from the combat. Um, in treatment, actually, you end up focusing on a lot more than that, but combat has to be there and we have to think of the PTSD is related to that for this particular study. So what is RTMS? Um, I, I put this little picture up here because I, I thought it was kind of nice that it, it gives you an idea. Um, in real life, um, it um, you sit in a chair that's kind of comfy and then there's this um, arm that comes up next and is placed over your head and that coil that you'll see there is the part that's put on your head so it's non-invasive nothing's going inside of you it's safe and it uses a figure eight shaped magnet about the size of two bagels and it's held over your head and it basically has a north and a south pole and when it's turned on the magnet rapidly alternates between the poles and it creates a low level current. And then that current is directed by pointing the coil like at a certain place in your head. And actually where I'm showing you like when I'm talking is actually where we point it. We're interested in this part um, of the head. And RTMS in general, so it could be pointed at different places depending on what people are using it for. And in um, general, the FDA has approved RTMS already or TMS for a multitude of different problems, it has not yet been approved yet for PTSD. 
So that's important that you know, and um, that's why it's research, that we don't necessarily have approval yet for PTSD, but there are some preliminary studies that show that it can be effective for PTSD. So this study is actually trying to take it on a larger scale and say, yep, um, we know we have more data now than ever to show that, yes, this should be FDA approved as a standalone treatment for PTSD, but we're also really interested in, could it augment the other things that we're already doing? So that's what TMS is in general. And then what's CPT? So cognitive processing therapy is a form of cognitive behavioral therapy, which is talk therapy. CPT has been around since the 90s. Um, it has been well-researched. We know that it's effective for PTSD. There's zero question. In fact, it's one of the gold standard treatments. It works better than medication. Um, it works better than talk therapy as usual. We know that this method, this protocol, this type of therapy works very well. And what it is is over the course of 12 sessions, but it can be fewer in some cases if people get better. Um, in our research study, we're doing 12 sessions, which is the original version. Um, and it's 50 minutes long. Um, sometimes it goes 55 minutes, but in general, about 50 minute sessions. And the whole idea is to understand what did you go through, how it changed um, the way you think about the world, yourself, et cetera. So we look at what you've been telling yourself about the trauma, what you've been telling yourself about the world and yourself. And then we try to see which of those thoughts really hold water and which might need to be changed. Because a lot of times people, when they're in the midst of trauma, have ways that they make meaning out of it that later they need to re-examine. Because when you're, when you're in the throes of trauma, it's not the best time to be trying to think things through. So you meet with your therapist to kind of work through that and then work outside a session on different practice assignments. One of the best, um, if you're interested in learning more about CPT in general, things that I think is kind of easy to do, low-hanging fruit, you can always do a Google search. But there is a podcast that was done called 10 Sessions because this client did it, the therapy in 10 sessions. And it's only one hour. It's not 10 hours. But it's about this person's um, experience with it. And it really walks you through what the therapy is like. Um, it wasn't for combat-related trauma. Um, it is for more of a sexual assault. But we use the same treatments regardless of the type of trauma. So I'm gonna shift over to Ellen and Ellen, just tell me when you want me to advance the, the slides. Okay, um, I really uh, thank you so much for giving all of that great information. I want to piggyback on two pieces before we advance the next slide. I, I liked your point about, we already know it works. So I want to uh, clarify that, that we do know it works. This is a national replication study. So we did this study already. 2011 to 2015, people got better. Um, we are redoing this because that is what you do when you seek FDA approval. Um, so we already know that these things work. Um, and then the other piece I like that you said, if you have PTSD or if you think you have PTSD, um, you do not have to have an official diagnosis yet. If you even suspect, um, we will do a phone screen and help you kind of sort through it. And then of course we do an official um, assessment at the beginning to determine. So I, some people might think, oh, I haven't been diagnosed by the VA, so this study doesn't, it's not going to work for me. That's not true. Um, so, and oh, one other thing too. Um, when we first did the initial trial, uh, some of the thinking was, yes, TMS maybe can work together with psychotherapy to enhance uh, the cognitive behavioral pieces, but after we got the results, uh, we think it's possible it could be a standalone treatment. So one of the conditions or one of the groups in this particular study is that you could get the brain stimulation alone. Um, but every condition in our study has what we call an active treatment. There is no placebo group. There's no group that gets absolutely nothing. Um, so those are just some additional uh, benefits that draw people in and that are really attractive to folks. Um, so, TMS, yes, uh, electrical stimulation. It is when people hear electrical stimulation, uh, they might, I don't know, have some thoughts about that, but it is non-invasive and people don't experience and you should not experience a lot of pain. It's not a painful thing. Some people don't even notice it at all. Some people report that it feels like a tapping or a buzzing or a tingling. And then some people try to fall asleep in the middle of the treatment. So Everyone's experience is different, but I want to stress it. It should not be painful. It is not a painful process. Um, so I guess we can advance to the next slide. 
I thought I did. Do you see the how do we think they could work together? Yes, yes. So, okay, thank you. So um, for people with combat related PTSD, um, when they've experienced the stress response or the fight, flight or freeze response, um, in normal recovery, there is a part of the brain that tells you, hey, the, uh, the threat is over. In people with combat related PTSD, the research tells us that the part of the brain that tells the stress response, the threat is over, is under responding, is not responding. So that's in short what we're trying to do with TMS is we're trying to direct the current as Dr. Williams showed you with that little figure eight picture. We're trying to direct the current to the part of the brain that will tell us the threat response is over. Um, by doing so, not only will that reduce the symptoms of PTSD, but if you are assigned to one of the therapy conditions, it will allow you to walk into therapy and be less overstimulated, be less stressed, nervous, hypervigilant, on guard and over alert. Um, so those are kind of the short answers of, of what it is that we're doing and why we're doing it. We hope that it will work together with CPT. Um, because it is a treatment study, we are a clinical trial. Um, and so we have three groups that you can be randomized into. We always explain that up front. Um, you can't request what group to be in. Uh, we can't recommend it is a literal virtual flip of the coin, but we have three conditions, three groups. You can be in the active TMS or RTMS and the CPT. You can also be in inactive RTMS and CPT or you can be in the RTMS alone. So let me talk a little bit about each of those groups. Um, you'll see TMS or RTMS is in each of those groups. So everyone is sitting in the chair for 30 minutes. Um, two of the groups will then proceed into a therapy room and receive uh, an hour or 50 minutes of psychotherapy. If you're in the final, that third group, you will receive the TMS alone. Um, so we have an arrangement called a double blind um, protocol, meaning that the person who is uh, providing the TMS is unaware if the TMS is active or inactive. Um, so that's why we have you sit in the chair. So if you are in one of the groups that's getting the psychotherapy, you are not going to know if you're getting the active or the inactive TMS, but you know you're getting the therapy. If you're in the TMS alone group, you know that you're getting the active TMS but our clinicians don't know what they're providing. And we do that again to keep them blind um, and to keep the treatments the same and um, so that there's no biases in, in what we're doing throughout the actual treatment visits. I realize, Ellen, that I should probably have made the slide to where the third item says active RTMS alone, you know, because that's the case there. And there's no such thing as an inactive RTMS alone. Um, and so I should, I, I'm gonna um, edit this before we publish these slides anywhere to include that. Okay, are you ready for the next slide? Uh-oh, did I freeze or, oh, there you go. That's right. Okay. Okay. Um, as I mentioned prior, this is our national replication trial, meaning that we can't just do the study one time and call it a day. Um, so we are not only expanding to three sites across the country, uh, but we are also expanding our follow-up out to a one-year marker. But the three sites that we're using are UT Dallas, uh, which is in the medical district of downtown Dallas, uh, the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic at MetroCare, and, and that is out in Addison, and then we're also partnering with Florida State University. Um, we have uh, collaborators at all of these sites that we've worked with on prior projects that we have very close working relationships with. And there's also a large uh, concentration of veteran population in these areas. Um, so that's why we've targeted these three places. Um, but each place will get anywhere from 75 to 100 plus uh, participants, hopefully. Um, and we hope to have roughly 330 at the end of our five year treatment study. So we are going to be uh, enrolling people for five years. We were about a year and a half in when COVID hit, uh, but we still have plenty of time to enroll people. Um, thank you. So what's involved? If you're interested and you want to find out more, the first thing that we request that you do is uh, contact us. So, um, and there will be different depending on which site you contact. Um, it doesn't matter. 
um, we someone will be there to either at the Cohen Clinic uh, do their overview and screening. If it's at UT Dallas, we have a phone screening that we do first, and Florida State University also has a phone screening. But in the initial screening, you will have some questions asked of you just about general medical uh, history, medications, general background. Um, and if everything looks appropriate and for you to proceed and you're still wanting to, you're scheduled for uh, the eligibility or the baseline assessment. And that includes a clinical evaluation with our psychologist, an EEG, an fMRI, um, and then what it says here, brain stimulation preparation, which is basically getting uh, all of the settings on the TMS machine arranged because everybody requires different settings. Everybody's head's a different shape and size, brain, skull's a different amount of thickness. So everybody has unique kind of custom settings. Uh, but the team looks at all of these things, the clinical eval, MRI, EEG. Uh, you get a copy of your MRI uh, that has your brain and that's a lot of people, that's attractive to a lot of people because that can be expensive if you do that out in the world. Um, but if everything looks good, and you, then you're still ready to proceed. You're randomly assigned to one of the three treatment groups that were on the previous slide. And then you come roughly once a week for 12 weeks. Uh, we do have some flexibility. We know life happens. So if people are sick or there's COVID or the winter storm or whatever, you know, we can flex and we try to, we try to be accommodating to, to people's schedules. Um, so once a week for 12 weeks for the actual treatment visits. And then we do three follow-ups, one month, six months, and 12 months. I uh, do want to point out also that um, it does not cost anything for you to participate. Uh, we do not contact insurance. We don't reach out to the VA. We don't talk about your results. Um, we do provide compensation for some of the visits. So the treatment visits themselves, there is not compensation. But when you come for an evaluation, uh, you get compensated. So for the MRI, EEG, and the clinical evals at the beginning, there's two points within the 12 treatment visits. And then each of the follow-ups, you do get a compensation. Okay, and then next slide. And then to, to reach out to the Dallas, uh, Fort Worth area sites, these are the ways that you can get in touch with us. So the Stephen A. Cohen uh, Military Family Clinic has a website, phone number, and uh, email, and same here at UT Dallas. Um, these are confidential avenues. So if you reach out, um, you can feel confident that uh, your information is kept private and secure. And then somebody from one of those sites will reach out um, and do a screening with you and then help you find, are you better suited for Addison or, or location at UT Dallas? Uh, Dr. Williams and I work pretty closely together and try to do what's best and most convenient. Thank you, Dr. Morris. Um, yes. I really appreciate you doing such a great overview and bringing up some of the questions that commonly come up um, you know, versus just the information that was in the slides. I think mm -hmm. this is a super exciting um, study. And as Dr. Morris knows, um, she and I have been trying to um, get this going from the get-go, um, even back in maybe 2017 when the Cohen Clinic opened. So we're super excited about the opportunity to offer it. And I just want to, I want to stress a couple of things. Number one, the no wrong door. Um, it doesn't matter to us which one you call. Um, we will, even if you know somebody in Florida and we didn't put the Florida information up here, if you contact us, we will make that happen um, and definitely, you know, get people enrolled. And then I also want to point out at, at the UT Dallas site, there are a few other research studies that they have if you go to that site um, in addition to this. And um, this is the only research that the Cohen Clinic is participating in. Um, and on the flip side, if you are to um, know somebody that you think, okay, maybe they have PTSD, but don't want to be in the study, or um, maybe they, but they want RTMS, et cetera, et cetera, call us and talk to us. We don't do TMS at the clinic unless it's through the study, but there are organizations that do, um, that we can connect you to, or that um, UTD can connect you to. And um, in general, as Tanya mentioned at the Cohen Clinic, if somebody doesn't qualify for the study or ends up not having PTSD, but still has anxiety or whatever it is, that we're a full service mental health outpatient clinic. So whenever somebody doesn't fit into the, the clinic um, and UTD does this too, they would then just refer them to us for therapy in general. Um, and so just wanted to make sure people know that if, if for some reason the study isn't what you end up doing, um, then there's still the option to get treatment. Um, I know that Tanya put in the emails into the chat, um, and I wanted to make sure we open it up to see if anybody had any other questions before we wrap up today. 
And then Ellen, if you can think of anything that we've forgotten to say, um, I, I, I feel like we've covered the, the most of it. I did think of two things. I know common questions that I've gotten over the years. Um, most medications are allowed. Um, for the most part, you don't have to discontinue the medications that you're currently on. Uh, that's an attractive feature. Um, in this particular uh, intervention, there are no sexual side effects. I know with a lot of the medications that are provided out there, that's a huge concern for our, our population. Um, so those are two things that come up a lot. Right, and I think that's actually a really good segue to, if, as part of the phone screening, if there's anything that we hear as a rule out, um, like I, one of the things I'd never really thought about is if we're doing MRIs, which we can bypass an MRI, that doesn't really have from the study, but you know, if you've got shrapnel in your, you know, side of your head, we're not going to be doing an MRI most likely, or, you know, it'll be looked at. So everything is really looked at very carefully. And Dr. Hart, who's the neurologist is amazing at, you know, looking at the person, not just as a research participant, but also like, what do we do to get this person into care? If, you know, if they need something more, if they need more assessment, if they need a different, you know, when he's got that MRI in his hand. Um, so I, I think thinking about, you know, there's a lot of care given to who we put into the study and making sure that it's going to be something we think will benefit them. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I don't see any other questions popping up. I just want to thank everybody for getting on today. Tanya, do you want to bring it home? Yeah, no, just thank you to everybody for joining us today. Um, we'll make sure that this recording is available for others to watch later on, or if you want to go back and, and kind of listen to something that either of them said previously, you can. Um, but thank you all for being here and um, just reach out if you need help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Bye.